So what I want to do for the second part of the tutorial is let the animation play out for a few complete cycles at real speed and then what we're going to do is slow it down and we can run things frame by frame, we can move forward uh, frame by frame if we want and we can also retract frames so we can really understand what's going on with these components. So here I'm going to let it run you'll see the cylinder extend and retract and extend again and retract. And notice it's not just the cylinder that's moving the gauges are moving, the directional valves moving the pumps moving, the relief valves moving there's a lot going on there in this simple circuit okay so hopefully that gave you a good idea of of how it all works but now let's look at it in detail so when we start here what we see is we've got a spool that's in the center position pressure is blocked right here and we see our relief valves open right our relief valve here the poppets off the land allowing a flow path from one to two so now I'm going to advance it and there at that point this spool shifted to the left and that's when things start to get interesting so now you've got an alternate flow path for the pump to move oil to instead of just going over the relief valve now it's going to fill this void across our directional valve spool and flow is going to start to head into the A port out of the A port of the directional valve into the piston end of the of the cylinder. So now I will advance it again and you see at this point between those last two frames the relief valve closed off. So now the pressure here it's easier the fluid takes the path of least resistance which in this case is into the piston end of the cylinder. So at this point what's go what do we want to look at? Well for one the red is indic indicative of the higher pressure blue is indicative of the lower pressure and there are varying colors in between that represent the intermediate pressures but at this point this cylinder here is going to start to extend because we've got pressure going into the piston end we've got a pilot pressure here and it doesn't look like our counterbalance valve has shifted yet because we still have high pressure on the rod end but if I advance it another frame there, at that point you could see it shift. So between those last two frames, if we look at the counterbalance valve, we'll go back and forward. Back and forward. So that opens up this flow path between one and two. So we've got flow going from P to A into the piston end of the cylinder. We've got flow trying to come out of the rod end of the cylinder. Now it's got a path over the counterbalance valve from one to two and now it can go into port B and ultimately to tank so we've got a complete circuit so I'll let it play a few frames here and that's more of a steady state type position at that point um, as it approaches the end of travel and I'll run in a couple more frames and when it gets to end of travel you're gonna see a pressure spike here because all of a sudden what was a wide open flow path is going to shut off because our actuator or cylinder is at end of stroke. So right there you saw the gauge kind of peg up right there. So at that point what's going on we still have our directional valve shifted so P is ported to A here and we still have um, a pilot pressure at our counterbalance valve so that's still open for the moment. Now another interesting thing between those last two frames is we see our relief valve open back up again. So I'll go back a frame and you see the relief valve was closed when things are moving along and then I advance it it opens up again. So I'll go back again and advance back and advance so you can see that relief valve opening up because now all of a sudden the only way this pump can relieve itself is to elevate its pressure to the setting of this relief valve and go to tank.
So now, our situation, we have a pump that's going over a leaf again. We still have a spool shifted. We have a double acting cylinder that is completely extended and not a stroke. So if we advance this again, the next step will be to change anything, we need our directional valve to change positions. So if I advance it a frame, now this went back to the center position. And if you recall, in our center position, A and B go to T and P is blocked. So now we're back at center. And when that happened, if you look at this, suddenly the red went to the blue again. See, if I go back a frame, when this was shifted over, this was exposed to pump pressure. Now when I shift the spool, all of a sudden A is going to be uh, vented, if you will, back to tank, but P is still going to be at the high pressure. So at this point, although we've shifted our spool back to center, still all of our pump flow is going to be going over relief because there's nowhere else for this pump flow to go. Okay, so the next frame is actually a spool shift to the other direction. So this is to the right. So this correlates with this spool position, P crossing over to B, A crossing over to T. P is crossed over to B. See this spool came off its land to open up that little bit of a flow path right there. There will be a decent pressure drop, drop across the spool depending on the design. There's a lot of factors that affect that. But for now, the takeaway is that a flow path opened from P to B, and now you're putting flow into port 2 of the countermounts valve. So P to B, if we go back to the schematic, now you're putting flow into port 2 of the countermounts valve. Now this, when you're moving flow this way, 2 can go to 1 right around that free flow check valve. We talked about that in part 1 of the tutorial. So flow from B to port 2 is going to go right around this free flow check and into the rod end. Same thing here. It's going to go right around here from B to 2. Over it, it's going to make this free flow check, pop it, come off its seat, and it's going to come out right over to port 1 and into the rod end. So I'll advance it a frame. If I go, excuse me, if I go back a frame, you can see this pop it. It's blocking the path right there. But now, I go, if I advance it a frame, you can see it move. See? Back and forward. And now if I keep advancing, what's going to happen? Well, our relief valve, our relief valve closed off again, and now our cylinder is going to retract. So this is what I would call a steady state position. I'm advancing it frame by frame but our counterbalance valves, the flow path is open from 2 to 1 via that check and oil in the piston end of the cylinder has an easy path back to tank. One area I don't want confusion, it seems like that this path here, the blue and the red intersect, but they don't. You have to envision these being two different drill paths and not intersecting each other. So the red P does not intersect with the blue tank flow there. So if I keep advancing, it takes us back to the beginning of the animation where we started with, with the spool in neutral. So I hope that was educational. I hope that this made sense and that it helps you better correlate the schematic depictions to the real world components. Um, these are somewhat simplified components, but they really do help you grasp the concepts of how these valves move and cylinders move in the real world. So thanks for tuning in.